Oh, going to be off the table. It's, ah! There we go. He's looking a lot healthier already. Wow, you um, you work fast with that. That looks good. To push his weight through to the floor. It looks rather nice. It sounds wonderful. The sound of classic Trackmaster. There we go. Hopefully get through that part there. There, or it might not. It can flip either way. Oh, come on! It's gonna get. Oh. Well, recently I had a Trackmaster Classic set out against the Trackmaster 2 play set and then I let my son play with it for a weekend and we're going to investigate exactly what he was up to on these railways. It was very interesting to see the way he interpreted both of these toys and only wanted to really play with one of them. I did a tour review and then a hard up review of this Glowing Mind playset which is Trackmaster 2 and then I thought wouldn't it be nice to compare it to the old classic Trackmaster Midnight Run and my son decided to add on to this uh, and also bring out the old classic Trackmaster trains. Initially he was playing with the Trackmaster 2 trains because some of these are ones that I recently reviewed. He does very much like the steaming versions. This is Trackmaster 2 steaming James uh, but what happened was he started to get very frustrated when these trains struggled to go up this very simple hill that Trackmaster Classic presents. No matter how hard James puffs there, he's always going to be slipping and sliding because of the way the Trackmaster 2 trains have no traction tyres. That is sort of fun. I did see my son giving these trains a nudge up and over when he only had the Trackmaster 2 trains out and then he said, Dad, can you go and get the classic Trackmaster trains that are suited to this track and that's when I really started to see him make a decision on which trains he preferred to play with. I've got Dodge here, uh, curiously with some Trackmaster 2 rolling stock and then I saw this sort of play going on where Classic Trackmaster would help Trackmaster 2 over a very simple hill. And over the back there James would sometimes get stuck on points just as you see there and then Dodge would just keep giving Trackmaster 2 James a little helping nudge to get around this very, very simple layout. And I think there's going to be a collision here with the subway surfer train that we're going to talk about next on this layout. Yes, it's going to get a little bit messy there, I feel. Oh, I think Lego minifigure just got slam dunked. Oh, yes, by the tunnel there. And I'll come and clean up this train wreck and this started to really change the way he wanted to play on this little very simple layout here and I will sub get the subway surfer train out here because this is the next one I'm going to talk about. Let me just uh, reset that minifigure after it got smacked by Morgan's mine. That's better. So this here is the driving piece for Harvey in Trackmaster Classic. He added some carriages on here. Henrietta's up the back and I'll give this a bit of a spin. And this is apparently emulating subway surfers if that makes any sense. I'm sure the people who play subway surfers it might make a lot of sense. And if you don't know, Subway Surfers is an app game that my son uh, and my daughter, they're both quite like. Oh, it's a bit rough over the top there, but it looks like we've made it round. And I think, uh, I think, unfortunately, we're going to go back through that mine there again. Oops, I forgot to change the points. Oh, it's got quite ugly. The hand of God can come in here and save the Subway Surfer, I hope, without a decapitation. Oh, got him out. And I'll just get this back on track. And the points set in the right direction. Okay, that was a bit ugly then. We are back on track, and really the joy of children is they come up with ideas like this. Uh, I would never have thought of using that Harvey drive component as a subway surfer train. But we'll just watch it do a couple of rounds, hey? In the strangest way, this is the one that I saw my son playing with the most. It looks bland, doesn't it? But um, he really keyed into that. And he, I think he really wanted me, me to do multiple railways uh, like you'd see in that game Subway Surfers. That's funny, he started adding track to this and he grabbed that flexi track. I wasn't a big fan of it, but he sort of sees it differently to me. Yes, you can tell me whether you like that or don't like it. I know one thing, my son loved that. I just want you to listen to the sound of the train over this section. He listened carefully. Very important sound on a model train. There might be some of you that are not familiar with the flexi track that was around with the classic Trackmaster. Uh, you either loved it or you hated it and it would break apart and you could make all these various lengths and also obviously change its shape to whatever you want. And I can make a buff there where it was once 
a uh, straight area and we can just watch the subway surfer do the corner there okay I think we've seen enough of that and it's certainly telling us a story and I'll come in and uh, very quickly grab it oh Oh, that was ugly, and we'll move to another train, eh? Woo! So just looking at the rail yard here, I gave my son free pickings to drag up whatever classic thing he wanted to drag up, and I noticed he mixed a little bit of rolling stock from Trackmaster 2, and I think the next train we'll take a look at... Ooh! I think this is a very curious one. Is that... Oh, it's Catlin. I nearly, nearly said Connor. Thank goodness the name is on the side. He did this mix of, uh, of classic versus Trackmaster 2 there. Okay, I've got this very unusual uh, train up on the tracks, and we'll give Catlin a bit of a spin. This may get very ugly very fast, or it may play out to be um, quite awesome. Just watch what goes on there. There you go, nice train wreck. And the problem here is, uh, who's going to come and save the breakdown train uh, when it's the thing that's derailed? Let me just set this up a little bit more appropriately. Okay, we're back on track, uh, hopefully in a manner that is going to perform for us, and I will set Catlin on her way here. Go, Catlin, go! Just going through the flexi track area at the back there, and we're going to weasel our way round to the front of this layout. Going past the boneyard, and oh, we're in a bit of strife when we're dragging stuff. Oh, Catlin's putting up a bit of a fight here. Oh, Aston's still dragging, still dragging it. <laughs> Oh man, that's getting a little bit ugly and I think, oh, is something going to fall? No! Uh, that's definitely a way to um, uh, have fun with your trains, but uh, also sadly you might ruin them as well. So we're hopefully back on track here, and there's a little thing I don't like when it comes to the Trackmaster 2 rolling stock, and sometimes you'll have these wondrous pieces, but they won't have the nice coupling system going on between it. They'll be like a hard coupler. Hmm, I don't know why that goes on, and I see a little bit too much of it. Anyway, we'll get this train on its way again. Going over the... Um, track there sometimes they get a bit stuck on that flexi track which is oh Catlin Catlin oh what I'm blaming this stuff here <laughs> well I've got to blame something uh, it's that flexi track maybe I'm just being reminded why I wasn't a big fan of it hey oh there goes that train going through that area there oh somehow made it through this time I'll just keep a very eagle eye on what's going on here on the flexi track part of this railway here and this is going to be the troublesome bit here it looks like yeah the jagging up at the back there yes yeah, so i think from what i can see going on here is it jeromone whatever is causing trouble and jagging up catlin and if i just give her a helpful hand through here she might make it round there she goes nice work it might be best if i give her another challenge in life mind you is now she's hooked up there Yes, yeah, so it's just curvy bit. Maybe we'll take it to a piece that doesn't involve this um, flexi track nightmare. And if I'm very fast and make a switcheroonie here, yes, we get sent on a slightly different railway, which will take us uh, wonderfully over the uh, midnight ride debacle. <laughs> okay, I didn't expect to see that. I'm still blaming. I'm blaming this here. Maybe if I take this off you'll notice the problems will go away okay I'll just get Callan back on track here and uh, I'm sure she's not gonna play up like we have just been witnessing I hopefully can guarantee that and actually she's been sent back uh, via the different points in this set uh, back to a way I didn't want it to go but you can see now she's free of that Trackmaster 2 rolling stock she's having a much easier ride which is sort of nice isn't it I just got to a set of points there in time and she will now come up the midnight Ride, hill, mountain, Morgan's mine. Oh, and she's crashed. Maybe need to pat some of that track down. Uh, we might retire, Catlin. She's um, playing up a bit, isn't she? Okay, the next train we're going to take a look at that my son was mucking around with on this crazy railway is the Green Salty. And I've sort of forgotten the story behind the Green Salty. He asked me, said, Dad, what is it with the Green Salty? There must have been an episode where he turned green just for the fact that we could pump out another toy. That's the only way I can explain it. And Salty is dragging with him some of the nicer Trackmaster 2 uh, rolling stock. And I've always said that you often get very interesting components uh, with Trackmaster 2 rolling stock. 
It's going to be curious to see if it hangs up on this flexi track because I think, yeah, I can see it jagging along there. Mm, interesting to see, isn't it? What works and doesn't work. Is that by chance or is that by design? I know my audience will tell me. We'll just uh, follow the green salty along here. Hey, old salty sea dog. One of their favourites, I dare say, with all the Thomas and Friend fandom. Aye, yeah. Yes, we'll just study that rolling stock getting jagged along by that Trackmaster Classic Flexi Track. Nasty work. I might give Mavis a spin and who knows, she might catch up with uh, Green Salty somewhere. Oh, she's just missed there, but she's going to be on a collision course now as she comes round this layout. They're basically on the same track now. And it's going to get rather ugly like that and <laughs> I would often see my son just have one train up against another. He loved it when he was doing that. Come on, Salty, come on, you can show your muscle. Yes, Salty has uh, just shoved Mavis off the tracks. And that's arguably the, um, the best fun, isn't it, hey? The absolute best fun. Let's get these two back on track again. And they've taken a different route this time around, and I'm sure they're gonna come together somewhere on the layout. That's gonna be near this boneyard. We'll explain that shortly. Oh, here they go, boof. Wow, just before we got to the turn of the tunnel with Kiss. And I'm not sure who's going to be the winner out of these two. It's whoever's really got the best traction going on. Wow, Salty is really, really trying his best to get Mavis off track. It's one of these things, as soon as there's the slightest advantage of angle of dangle, there's going to be a winner. I'll be putting my money on Salty, uh, to be honest, because I don't think Mavis is turning the wheels anymore. Yep. Oh, okay, they're both off the rails. So I'd say, uh, well, there's no winner in that one. Yes. So uh, that's the fun of the classic track master, I dare say. Wow. It's a very different sound as well, isn't it, hey? And I'll just get them going in the same direction and we'll move on to another train. I'll just get them around the other part of the layout, if that makes any sense. As Salty lumps that uh, strange rolling stock uh, back to the boneyard. Oh, Mavis is derailed. Oh, Salty is still pushing. Ma hasn't finished. They're still tussling on here. Don't mess with Salty, Mavis. Uh, he's a serious contender for the... Oh, uh, someone is going to fall off the table. Got my faith in Salty, and he will um, just continue to push his way through to the floor. <laughs> ah, get me off this stinking railway. Not fair. Well, thank goodness I made the classic toys uh, nice and robust. Mind you, the Trackmaster 2 stuff can take a whole ton of punishment. And w that might be the nice cue to move on to our next train and also turn uh, the wondrous Mavis off here as well. And we'll gently put our toys away. The next piece of rolling stock will give a spin and it's a nice combination. Interesting the way my son saw this combination. It's Bell, which is the firefighting engine. Um, plus he put the Trackmaster to what would you call those, like the water tankers for the steaming trains. And that's the way he interpreted um, like classic Trackmaster to be married up with Trackmaster 2. In fact, what I'll do is let me just spin it around the other way. I don't think that these little tankers are going to like the... Now that track at the back, that um, track that, uh, what do you call it, the um, forgotten this name track. Flexi track is the name of that track. I just had a total mental blank and we'll just watch Belle uh, do her wondrous things around this layout. Classic track master and also the old uh, Tommy trains have got a distinctive sound about them. It's something that uh, I know a lot of people enjoy listening to. Some people might classify it the sound of their childhood. I just changed the direction here and we'll get onto that nasty track. Here comes Belle. Yeah, one of the uh, more popular of the female characters. And I've actually totally forgotten the episode that it featured in. Wasn't it Fiery Flynn and Belle came together? I don't know. I can't remember everything. Mind you, those little tankers aren't having that much trouble on that flexi track. I'll do another change of direction here. Yes, yeah, the joys of classic track master, isn't it? Hey, very much a good memory. And that will set us in a new direction, going past the boneyard. Yeah, wow, powering and steaming through that flexi-track system there. That caught me by surprise. 
Yeah, that's Boneyard very much the way my son's thinking at the moment when near Halloween. I'll just do a change of direction there and Bill is going to go through the tunnel there, up and over the back. It says much about the classic toys, doesn't it? When I saw my son gravitate towards classic Trackmaster versus all the Trackmaster 2 stuff that I've got. Just watching Bill get around for the last time and then I'll grab her off the railways. What do you reckon, hey? Nice work, Bill. And I will snatch her here. Yes, I thought that was a great idea. The firefighting engine and putting those two Trackmaster 2 tankers with it. Uh, yes, maybe I would never have thought of that. Uh, I, I don't think of mixing, you know, one versus the other. And the next train that we'll take a look at, and I thought it was curious for some reason, uh, my son gave, this is the classic, um, nice diesel 10, just giving him a standard carriage and I couldn't quite work out why all of a sudden uh, diesel 10s become super useful. Just going through Morgan's mind there, uh oh, okay, uh, well it helps maybe if Pinchy is down. Um, sorry diesel 10, Pinchy's got to stop breathing for a moment. Yeah, that diesel 10, uh, it's got a C battery in it. Some of the classic Trackmaster stuff had the heavier battery in it. And it makes for a much uh, more traction style of train in the sense. You could always have a much longer uh, set of rolling stock with the ones that were nice and weighty, like uh, the C battery powered ones. Just having a bit of a spin over the back here along the uh, flexi track. At least I didn't have a, a jam up mental moment then. Yes, nice work. Nice and quiet as well, this Diesel 10. Behaving itself nicely. I'll just make a change there. And Diesel 10, uh, with that change, should go through Morgan's mind here. I think a lot of us miss the classic faces they used to do on these toys, hey? I do. And I'll just grab uh, Diesel 10 at the Boneyard here. Yes, uh, very, very nice style of Diesel 10. Uh, I think, yeah, once again, it was all about that face. That was the old classic looking diesel tent face that we just don't see today. Well, there's no use crying about it. We're never going to go back to the classic stuff. And that's why the classic stuff remains the classic stuff, doesn't it, hey? Uh, let's take a look at Spencer. And uh, curiously, my son gave Spencer quite a conventional load. Mind you, Spencer would be in a bit of a huff having such an industrious set of rolling stock going on here. Okay, Spencer's got everything loaded on, and we'll just watch all this going by. I think it's all classic stuff. Nice bit of a challenge here to see if Spencer can... Oh, no. Um, Spencer's fallen foul. I can't say, um, oh, the indignity, because that's what Gordon would say. Um, Spencer's having a lot of trouble here. Maybe we need to grease up these axles, eh? And Spencer is fighting to get around that other back corner there, and we'll just watch what happens here, eh? How embarrassing. The really fast, powerful engine just uh, can't handle this little hill. Let me just try something here with this uh, booster thing. I'll get rid of the little Lego minifigure and I'll add this on. Okay, I'm either going to look like a champion here or a fool. Mind you, I always seem to look like a fool. I've got that booster on the back here and hopefully this is going to help Spencer get up the hill there. I'm a fool, aren't I? I'm not giving up on this idea yet. <laughs> Please believe me, it does work. When you put these boosters on, maybe without corners like that, you can get things up the hill. Uh, something like that. <laughs> and we'll just keep a very close eye on this because it could get ugly again. Yes, um, around the boneyard, it got very ugly. Okay, I've changed the configuration a bit here. <laughs> I'm hoping this works. Spencer's there. The booster is directly behind Spencer now. I've added a carriage on there. The same rolling stock on the back here. This is either going to be a make or break me thing here or you're going to think I'm a total idiot. Okay, I've got the booster on and um, I don't know what is going on here. Okay, we're going to try and get up that hill. Okay, I want this to work because I want you to believe me. Go, Spencer, go. Please stay on track. Yes, oh. Do you have a little bit more faith in me now? A little bit more faith? And we might watch that again, so it, you'll say, oh, but Leo, that was a setup, wasn't it? Okay, with the booster on there, going up the back. Classic Trackmaster, man. You can't go past And that was really the goodness of Harvey. I spoke about when we were looking at the comparison of Trackmaster 2. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, well, it's, um, I better stop, eh? 
I want you to have faith in me. What it needs is just a little bit more weight on the back. I'm going to add this carriage as well somewhere here. Okay, here we go, and I will leave this soon. I know you'll say, I'll oh, give in, Leo. You're never going to prove a thing here. Let me get Spencer on plus the booster. Okay, and uh, let's see how this works. I think we might have a, a much better balanced train here, I'm hoping. Go, Spencer, without anything going foul, I hope. It looks rather nice. It sounds wonderful. The sound of Classic Trackmaster. There we go. Hopefully get through that part there, there. The wonder of those boosters, eh? And that's all about Harvey. That is until Spencer decides to fall foul. Will he ride himself? No, he just becomes a train wreck. What an embarrassment, just smacked into the boneyard there. I'll just go around without going over the hill. Uh, I know there are other people commenting on the video when I spoke about this booster. That's the Harvey booster, so... Sorry if I'm repeating myself, but that was probably the best thing going on with the old classic Trackmaster Harvey. And we'll just get this train on its way. Oh, I've got to turn both on. I keep forgetting, don't I? And just going over the back there on that uh, flexi track, nearly forgot his name again. With Spencer going, it'd be quite a drag, uh, dragging all that along. But with the booster there, it's doing it in style. Just trying to get some nice shots here of the train. You can see it in its uh, total length going along there. Nice. And I'm keeping my eye on Spencer up at the boneyard. I think sometimes he plays up. Oh, okay, he's just got through that time. And again, Spencer um, playing a game over the back there on the flexi track. Sooner or later, it's just going to get um, very ugly. Oh, it might ride itself, or it might not. It can flip either way. Oh, come on, it's going to get... Oh! Ouch. That might uh, very well be the cue to give Spencer a break. Noticing that everything's still working down here. And we'll uh, quietly put all that away. Yeah, before I move on to the next train and explain the boneyard and why we're playing with skeletons on these railways, let me just take a look at this. Uh, well, Trackmaster 2 said here was an El Cheapo one from Aldi. Uh, look, there's elements of this that I really liked. Uh, that's my glow in the dark diesel running on that track. But what I didn't expect was the fact that my son would gravitate so heavily towards classic Trackmaster and I basically almost totally ignore this place out here. He never asked for any track bits to be added onto this uh, and the rolling stock or the Trackmaster 2 trains and rolling stock he tried to play with on the classic Trackmaster set but it became so frustrating he said dad just go and get the classic Trackmaster trains up please. Uh, don't get me wrong, there's good things about Trackmaster 2. It is way more fun when you have multiple trains playing on the layout. And this was a layout that had boxing that showed, well, two trains in the boxing, but it came with one. Although it was indicated there's only one in the playset, but as I said in the review, if this playset came with two trains, man, it just would have been so much better and so much fun. And the sort of fun that you have with two trains is probably about to play out. There you go, right on cue. And that is really all the fun. Oh, Thompson's got away there playing with trains. Um, I can't make decisions for toy companies. All I can do is uh, make videos that uh, help you make decisions. I think that's uh, the best thing I can do for you. And I'll just watch my custom glow in the dark devious diesel come up and nudge Thomas again. It may happen in the same spot, it may happen in a different spot. You just never know where it's going to happen. And um, yes, it's going to. Be a mysterious thing when it happens. I can't pull a string and make it happen. Ooh, nearly happened then. But I know it's gonna happen. And there's all, oh, Diesel is now caught up there. And you know what's gonna happen next? That's right, without sounding like Ferdinand, um, Thomas is gonna come along and smack Diesel and all of a sudden the game has changed. Oh, nice work, Thomas. I'm giving that battle to Thomas. That was a wonderful smack off the railway there, given to Diesel. Yes, if only it came with two trains. And like I said, I would have been saying to you, bye, bye, bye. But all we got 
Well, we didn't get that. All we got was uh, Thomas with the set. Okay, yes, it is close to Halloween for us, I dare say for the whole world, and my son got into some skeletons, uh, nice cheap ones, and what he started to do was he started to dress up this railway uh, with all these skeletons on that piece there, which is a lovely piece of classic Trackmaster stuff. Uh, they're only very, very cheap skeleton packs, nice to detail from the reject shop for Fort Dollars, one of my favourite little retailers uh, that I go to, I love that shop. And what he was also doing, and this caught me by surprise, I wouldn't do a video about this because, well, you know what YouTube's like these days. He was adding uh, blue tack. There it is there. Okay, and it looks like that when you start playing with it. He loves playing with blue tack. We got these, uh, I'll call them knockoff Coptic markers uh, from Aldi. Uh, my daughter has the real expensive ones from Japan, but that's like a, um, a clone. And with the ink from that, he colors the blue tack. And then he starts to basically fill in these guys, and I think he's got like zombies. Um, I don't know. You tell me what's going on there. And apart from the strange head detailing, there was also uh, stuff going on down inside it. Initially, he was making like um, there's that toy which shows you all of the insides of the human body, and I've just forgotten its name. It's like a classic toy. And there was an artist who did a great big giant version of it, and I've forgotten the name of the artist as well, famous artist. Uh, yes, and then they started to be like zombified, which I'm showing you there. Some of them would have flesh on their legs, and then others would be like, you know, like, I'm not going to say the B word. Yes, and um, strange faces like that. And this sort of play uh, built up, because initially the only thing he was doing was he was adding like a bit of extra eye detail. And then he started putting crosses on, and he's always going for blue tack uh, as a very simple thing to play with. And once the blue tack and these markers came out, I think the children in his class are doing this. They're always colouring things with texture, in a sense, the texture ink. Uh, maybe other children who watch my stuff can you know, elaborate on that. You know, there's all sorts of versions here. There's some... I don't know what was going on there. Um, yeah, that was the fun he was having. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's children for you. Like, I would never ever have thought of doing that um, classic sort of kid stuff. It was just really classic, cheap fun. And I got a big surprise when these, you know, $4 bags of skeletons got turned into zombies and things like anatomy studies, <laughs> okay, with, you know, a $2 packet of blue tack. And I think, I can't remember the price of these. These are like really cheap uh, fake Coptic markers. And there's a lot of ink in these. And I'll just give you a demo here. You can see the ink uh, just bleeding out of that. And then what they do is you can get your fingers in. This is where I'm going to get into a lot of mess. And you can mix your blue tack up and then it colors your blue tack. You can see you've got to do a bit of mixing there. But um, just believe me on that is actually... Uh, the way my son and I think his friends at school, because I think there are multiple children doing this, were having a lot of fun. I know some of you say, oh, come on, Leo, you're pulling my leg. Uh, it doesn't work. Well, there you go. I've just spent a bit of time. I put the ink into that blue tack, and I've got coloured blue tack, which is actually very different to uh, the original colour the blue tack is. And I've also successfully got a whole bunch of that texture ink on my fingers. Yes, all this got done. My son was quite sick with whooping cough. It, was, it went through the school he was at. I thought whooping cough was the thing of the past, but we got a face full of it, which isn't a nice thing. Uh, I think these sets of the fake Coptic markers, I think, from memory, I think they're around about $12, but please correct me if I'm wrong. That's from Aldi. I think for a set like that, if you're buying the Japanese stuff, man, the price really varies uh, depending on where you buy them online, but they can get very, very expensive, like maybe 60 bucks. And again, please correct me if I'm wrong, maybe you see different prices to me, but I know the real stuff's expensive. And maybe with that pink one I made up, um, yes, you can use normal textures as well, okay? You don't, the, the good thing about those styles of markers is there's lots of ink in them, and I'll give this guy back some, uh, well, something so he can digest food with, hey? Without saying the word guts, because that might demonetize this video. There we go. He's looking a lot healthier already. You know, back in the old days on YouTube, I would have done a dedicated video about that, but no more, man. It's so dangerous in the site to even venture into that. That's the Boneyard and the next train. Well, it's got a bit of a bone theme going on as well. It's, um, wondrous. Yes, uh, he chose Donald to be like a um, graveyard train. Maybe because of its colour, he's put skulls in this troublesome truck. He's put uh, leg bones and stuff in this troublesome truck. And rib cages in the end one. And let's give this wondrous bone train a bit of a run on the railways. Perfect for Halloween, but this we can't say Halloween anymore in our videos, can we? Yeah, we've already hit strife here. What's going on here? 
Okay, on your way. Please don't play up with me. Okay, the bone train um, goes past the bone yard. <laughs> it's all sorts of trouble. Wow. Um, yeah, that's death on the railway, isn't it? I've righted what's wrong and hopefully we'll have Donald on his way here and we can look at the wondrous bone shaking going on in those troublesome trucks. Oh, I knew a person who once said, you know, a human skull, it's something that uh, once you look at it, you can't take your eyes away from it. Is that true? Yes. Do you know the famous person who said that? Hmm. I can tell you one thing, it wasn't me, or maybe I just made it up. <laughs> Yes, anyway, it's a um, wondrous sort of train. It's funny, I think a couple of years back I did a similar thing in a Halloween video back when I used to do Halloween videos, but I don't do them anymore. Just a bunch of very cheap skeletons with some a little bit of detailing going on. Totally transforms that wondrous piece of classic Trackmaster playset, doesn't it? Nice work there, Donald. I do have a Douglas somewhere down in the box. I'm wondering why he chose one versus another. I'll just do a switcheroonie there. And we can watch the uh, graveyard train uh, go through Morgan's mine. A little bit spooky, isn't it, eh? Ooh, watch out! And then do something wonky on the way up, eh? Didn't we have trouble there before? I'm just trying to reach from this far side of the table to make things right, hey? I wonder what's going on there. Oh. Crikey, Charlie, what is going on there? Come on, stop playing up on me. Start showing us how awesome Trackmaster Classic is, although I think uh, most people are starting to understand that. I'm just studying what's going on up the back there. Oh, that's right. Weird, when you put your camera on it, uh, it all seems to work fine and dandy. It's very much like that with these trains I've noticed. Don't tell him I'm watching. Ah, work that time, caught ya. Just let me turn you off and backtrack a bit. What's causing that there? Was it that little bit of track that's... Oh, it might have been that there. That may have fixed it, I hope. Okay, we're back on track. Away we go. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure I've done something like this in the past. But I don't think I divvied up the bones in the way my son has done like that. I don't know whether I caught that on camera, but it was the tender that went awry. And now it's turning into a bit of a bone shaker sort of train, and I'll just come along. Oh, and uh, turn this train off, eh? Yes, I rather like that. I rather like it indeed, but we can't... Uh... Well, I don't do Halloween stuff anymore. It's just too dangerous to do. I just noticed on the top here, my son had dressed up. There's sort of like the way he first started doing the skeletons with anatomy parts, like hearts and lungs and things. I don't know where he learned that from. Maybe he'll be a doctor, but when he saw the fun of that, they just became a bloodbath sort of thing like that one. To, to me, it's just got too much blood on it. Uh, but that's what he liked, and that's what those uh, strange textures do. They've got a lot of ink in them, and it does that sort of thing, almost like painting. Oh, I'll finish off with the bone train again. I'll just get it up and running and I'll start adding some more trains to the circuit until things start to go wrong and that skeleton's gone crazy there. Whoa! I didn't expect that. I might give Classic Thomas with that um, passengers that appear and disappear, blah blah, uh, give it a bit of a run. Go Thomas, go! I don't think I've given Duck a run yet. I and mean, we want to see Duck running. I was probably screaming, Ah, but you didn't give Duck a run! Go Duck, go! And that's Classic Duck. Nice, nice, nice. Over the back there, I've got, um, I've just forgotten if it's Donald or Douglas, um, one of them. Uh, Thomas is over there, and uh, Duck is now over the back there, just coming off that um, cranking sort of track. Maybe best seen, yeah, they're almost uh, equally apart from each other at the moment. Hmm. Let's add a troublemaker, eh? Got to have troublemakers. Well, Diesel 10 is over the back on the cranking track. Uh, Duck is up here, being very duck-like, and Thomas is actually catching up to Duck with his appearing and disappearing passengers, which, oh! Duck must have had a malfunction there, and I think Diesel 10 is the next to come into this. I, the boneyard. Duck couldn't handle a boneyard. Okay, bang, and then we're gonna have Donald into there. Very much a classic style of train wreck. It's funny, Trackmaster 2 sort of does more dynamic train wrecks because of the way the trains grab onto the track. But as I've always seen, there's something that will give, something will get a bit of traction and it'll just go, oh, Diesel 10 is down. Actually, Donald is down as well. Oh, I think the winner of that one, I'll have to give it to Thomas, eh? Let's do a bit of a reset and we'll do uh, one more. 
I don't know what happened with Duck. Uh, I think Duck just saw a skeleton and jumped for his life. Okay, I've got them back on track and I'll get Duck going first in a very clunky sort of way. Thomas is next. Uh, Donald is next. And uh, Diesel 10 come up the back here. Is the last to get moving. Just off camera, Diesel 10's actually just rolled at the bone station. They, he couldn't handle it. I don't think, oh, Thomas is nudging there. Nudging the back of Duck, but Thomas is stuck and looks like Donald's going to come along and smack Thomas there. Oh, uh, that was the sound of Thomas hitting the deck. It wasn't a nice sound, was it? I'll just get Diesel 10 back on track. I don't know what's up with Diesel 10. Um, Duck is scooting along here, nice and fine. Uh, Donald with his boneyard train is doing nice work as well. Actually being uh, quite a good bone train. Going past the boneyard, nice work Donald. It's a much slower pace isn't it? When I do those challenges with Trackmaster 2 it's much faster pace and maybe that's the glory of Trackmaster 2. Donald is steadily catching up to Duck there. It's almost like uh, yeah they're in slow motion compared to Trackmaster 2. And over the back here on this uh, Bibbly bobbly track, and I keep forgetting its name. Donald is almost there, gonna catch up and nudge Duck, and it's not gonna get pretty. Oh, the boneyard might be the cider. Oh, just made it through there. It might be over the back where it gets ugly. Diesel Ten is on the other part of the track where we can't see him. Oh, Duck is just snaking his way over the back there with Donald uh, just nipping at that back carriage there. It can get very very untidy very quickly just never know when it's going to happen Ooh, coming around to the boneyard again i think when diesel 10 finally catches up that may be the pincher in all this again over the back there snaking their way through the flexi track finally remember its name again i don't know how oh duck has actually got a bit of speed up then it's sometimes like that things will clang up and hang up and things will dart forward again past the boneyard Diesel 10 is not far away now. Yes, Diesel 10 has caught up with the bone train there. This might nudge Donald off the tracks. The way, oh yes, I can see a wheel coming off there. There could be bones spilt any moment now. Diesel 10 is causing havoc up the back there. Oh uh, yes. Oh man, one of these corners here, there's gonna be a tragedy, I just know it. Could be past the bone yard. Very apt as, oh yes. Oh, the rib cages are almost out. Diesel 10 is nudging, nudging forward. I can't see Pinch. Oh, next carriage is almost out too. Oh, yes, Diesel 10 is going to nudge Donald. Oh, going to be off the table. It's, ah! Oh, no. Well, you wouldn't have picked it, would you? Duck won. What an ugly ending to poor old Donald. <laughs> and Duck once again got scared by the boneyard. Very much for a reminder to me, it's a very different style of play you get with Classic Trackmaster. It's nowhere near as dynamic, but hey, it's still fun. I think it's still fun. And just looking down here, there's a whole stack of train wreckage and bits and bobs and skeletons and diesel tens laying everywhere. But I should probably come along and save Donald uh, from the deck. Okay, I just saved Thomas and the appearing and disappearing cart there. And there's all sorts of bits here, yes. There's uh, skulls, there's a tender here, more troublesome trucks. Get those up on the table. Last but not least, well, a couple of skulls and uh, diesel 10 saved. And I'll put the skulls back where they belong. Uh, maybe get this train back on track because my son will know I've been playing with it. And try and get the bone train back in the way he had it. Now, what I like here is when they spilled over, we've got the rib cages here. Then we've got all the legs and stuff here. And it's, uh, I don't know which way they went. Uh, maybe this is right. The thing about my son is he'll know that I've been fiddling and diddling out here. 
and then it'll be like, oh, what did you do? Why did you do it? Uh, why weren't you doing it with me? It's going to be a very hard one to answer because I say, I'm sorry, um, but sadly, YouTube's uh, not what it used to be. I got Donald back on track here. I just hope I've got this bone train the way it was. Or else I'm in big, big trouble. Yes, just another reminder just how good the classics can be and just how much fun it is with a couple of cheap skeletons and some textures and some blue tack and, you know, you'll have the best fun that you've ever had this Halloween, without saying the word Halloween. Well, son came home from school and he's clarified something for me about those uh, skeletons and things he did. Just tell me the name of the one that I got wrong. This one's actually called the Demon. The, who gave you the inspiration for that? It's like Undertale and other stuff. Undertale. Well, I've never heard of Undertale. Yeah, it's a weird thing, that one. There, so it's a demon. Yeah. Hmm. You fix this bit. There we go. I've got the expert in action here. This is what he was doing all the time when he was sick with whooping cough. So with the skeletons, you can make this one easy because you just do this, you just cover there it. There we go, yeah. We're getting it from the horse's mouth. A lot of ink in those pens, isn't there? Yeah. Wow, you um, you work fast with that. That looks good. Yeah. Can you tell me about the other skeletons? What was your idea? I know you started doing like anatomy ones to start with. So I just started doing this and I was like, hey, yeah, why don't I just put skin on them? Okay, you skinned the skeletons. So when I was making this, uh, so when I finished the face and the body, I was like, hey, why don't I just put guts in it? Oh, guts. It is guts. And then, okay, and and then I just... then. Soon I just started doing this the one skeleton and I was like, hey, why don't I do it on this too? And just explain that one, which is different again. So I was like, hey, why don't I make a superhero one? So, uh, this is so, actually Robin's cape. Oh well, my. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I just made it so 3D eyes, like well, that. But why does it look like it's been through a fire or something? What's going on there? Because it's undead superhero. Undead, it's like a zombie, is it? Yeah. Okay, well that explains it. That's from the horse's mouth and it's important to hear, I feel. This is a demonstration of how the demon walks. So it's just like crawls off his arms and yeah. Wow, that's quite impressive. And did you see, he didn't notice I added that to the skeleton there. He didn't yep, see I it. Yep, I noticed it. What did I do to it? You use 13 instead of 3. Use, never ever use 13. Oh, I used the wrong colour, did I? Yep. Does it still look cool? Uh, a little bit, but it's pink, but this is... This is three. Oh, this is from the expert here. See, that's three. Okay, so you've got to get the right colour to make the right shades in the blue tacking of the... Yes, okay. Yeah, well, he did see it, didn't he? Mm -hmm. I thought I was quite clever in doing that, and I thought he'd never notice, but he did. Yes, uh, some of the simplest and cheapest fun, I think, uh, that he's shown me to do with uh, just things laying about the house and some cheap skeletons.